In our last episode, we had just left Dinosaur National Monument, heading west. Today, we make it to the top of Empire Pass, just outside of Park City, Utah, where we made the decision to try and wait out the poor air quality from all the West Coast fires before moving on. It seems as though we've been heading up a lot of mountains lately, reminding us that life is a constant uphill climb. But how great is that? While everyone wants to live at the top of the mountain, happiness and growth occurs while you're climbing it. And just think how amazing the view will be once we conquer such a feat. So today we embrace the hills because they show us our strengths and our weaknesses and we will always come out better people for having made the climb. We're just gonna hang out and enjoy Park City for a few days and see what there is to see. I know this is a great town, full of wonderful things and wonderful people. Let's go check it out, follow us. Wherever I go, I will always know Everything I need is right here with me It's time to let it all go, no matter who knows Anything about me now I'm ready to see what life's got for me. I got one thing left to say. We just arrived in Park City last night. Spent the night on top of this hill back here. And it was awesome. We woke up to incredible views. The inclines coming up here were uh, pretty crazy. <laughs> Pretty tight switchbacks for that big old camper, but old babe handled it just fine. So our plan was to go to Oregon. Uh, we were just gonna stop here for the night and keep jamming on to Oregon, but I woke up this morning and checked out the smoke map from all the fires. And it turns out we are right on the edge of a huge plume of smoke uh, that is originating out of Oregon and Idaho. And it's extremely unhealthy to be breathing air in Oregon and Idaho right now. So we've decided to delay our journey to Oregon by a few days. There's a cold front or a storm front rather moving in on Thursday, I believe. So that should clear the smoke out, we hope. In which case, we'll go ahead and head to Oregon at that point. Um, Unfortunately, fire season keeps going through October, but I gotta get to Oregon. My dad's got some wood that I gotta split for him. So, <laughs> I've been split wood for him since I was, I don't know, eight years old or so. Maybe younger? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, he's got a big old pile for me to split. And we gotta hang out and do all that stuff before he heads back down south for, this, for the winter. So we've decided to hang out in Park City for a few days and check it out, see what there is to see, and have a little fun. What have we found here? Super cool.
When driving through this area, the Empire Viewing Stop is a must. From this point, you can overlook all of Park City on one side. as well as Herbert City and 13 different mountain peaks on the other. On a clear day, I'm sure the view is even better. And if you're adventurous to hike a little ways up the trail, you'll find yourself standing at the Church of Dirt, a perfect spot for sitting and contemplating, photo opportunities, or even getting hitched. This is how they book their weddings up here. First one to put a piece of wood with your date on it gets to have your wedding. Oh look, there's one here in a few weeks. Park City is very well known as an incredible skiing town, but what you may not know is that it also has more than 400 miles of trails for non-motorized recreational activities, such as mountain biking and hiking. We thought that our technique of sticking to higher elevation would work in Utah as it did in Colorado, but I guess 9,700 feet just isn't high enough with how expansive the fires have become. Each day we watched as the city below faded more and more as the smoke engulfed the valley slowly creeping its way up the mountain. With the impending smoke encroaching on our turf, we decided to make the best of the air quality we had left to head down into the city for exploration before the air became too hazardous to breathe. We have been trying to wait out the smoke at the top of Empire Pass for the last three days and it's just getting worse so we've decided just to move forward with our travels. So today we're gonna go into Park City for the first time and see what we can find there. Join us on today's adventure. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If you could, please click the like button for us. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And ring the little bell. It'll give you a reminder next time we put out a video. Enjoy the rest of the show. We just arrived at the Utah Olympic Park. So we're gonna go check it out. They've got a museum inside, I believe. They've got these crazy, amazing, giant ski ramps outside we're gonna look at. I guess this is where all the Olympians train for winter sports here. Apparently Park City is phenomenal for skiing. It's uh, touted to be the best in the whole country. So uh, we're gonna check this out. I'm gonna drool a little bit over what could be if it was winter time and we'll have to make it a point to come back here in the winter. I don't know if it'll be this winter or not, but eventually I'm gonna go skiing here. It's on my bucket list. Make another one and Nick's dreams come true. Yeah, I love it when my dreams come true. All right, we'll see you guys inside. General admission is free here if you want to do your own self-guided tour. They also offer other tours you can pay for. We're going to do this Alpha engine. 
museum tour here on our own today. Here's a line of all the Barbara Alley collection of 30 years of ski fashion. She's been making snow outfits for like 30 years. This museum, named after Alf Ingen, a Norwegian skier with the reputation for his world-class skiing skills. After his arrival to America, his achievements as an athlete and ski pioneer became legendary. He set a professional world ski jumping record five times once breaking the world record twice in one day. Not only did he receive over 300 trophies in his lifetime career, but he also assisted in the creation of 31 ski resorts, became known as the father of the powder skiing technique, and received the highest recognition possible for skiing in America. Here they've got the Hall of Fame of ski instructors. All considered ski legends. And they offer short viewings of different snow-related videos here in their theater. Of course, Nick's in here watching. He watches a lot of snowboarding videos, like The Art of Flight. This section is what they've titled Silver Ore to Olympic Gold. It runs through the history of Park City from when it was a boom town, when they mined silver ore, to when they had their first lift, ski lift to when Park City officially opened its first ski area in 1946 and 2002 when they hosted the Salt Lake Olympic Winter Games. This mountain sport simulator here you can pay for. Four different options. Oh, wow. What do they use that for in the winter? Whoa, they die from that high up? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> I get scared on a normal diving board. These in there. Oh, they jump off into it for flips and stuff? I guess. It didn't I look that deep that. though. I'm only this crazy. These guys are like that crazy. <laughs> what is that? Like AstroTurf? They're Q-tips. Those are Q-tips. Look at the Q-tips. Yeah, that's trippy. It's a close idea, guys. I think this is what they use for practice in the summer. You might be right. Otherwise, why would you go into a freezing pool that froze over? Ooh, backflip into the pool. So overlook in the city over here. How much smoke there is, you can see pretty far today. Yeah. Must be dissipating. So this is the top of the museum. You can see, oh man, it's so bright. Some of the jumps and ramps. This, this is like a dining hall. Nick's boogie in. I don't know what that is, like a froggy boogie. Welcome to my lair. For 17 days at the dawn of a new millennium, the world slowed down a bit as 3.5 billion people paused to watch the Salt Lake 2002 Olympic Winter Games. Utah, meanwhile, accelerated at G4 speeds, ignited by the passion of 2,399 athletes from 77 nations who arrived in these snowy peaks and valleys. The slick rinks, fast tracks, and powdery slopes of this breathtaking state would become their stage. Their power to inspire became the anthem of these games, a song heard in the cowbell clatter on a ski hill, in the clap of a speed skate, and in the slap of a hockey puck. Each night, 20,000 fans gathered in the Olympic Medals Plaza to celebrate this song, to watch the glimmer of gold, silver, and bronze, and to light the fire within. During the land of enchantment at the opening ceremony, Rice Eccles Olympic Stadium morphed into a menagerie of wild western animals, deer and elk, beaver and rabbit, horse and bison, to invoke the sense of wonder that settlers discovered upon viewing these creatures. Performers inside the animals manipulated the various body parts, lending a sinuous magical flow to the show, 
a special shadow projection within the bison created an image of a buffalo herd running along its side. It's a display showing how they actually forge the Olympic gold medals. What is that? The curling ball? I thought those things were like hockey pucks. Apparently this is a regulation curling. They call it disc, ball, hurdling thing. I don't know what they call it. It's like what? 30 pounds? What do you think it weighs? 20? That's probably right. Didi Cora Didi lived her life believing anything was possible, inspired those around her to believe in their dreams. When she learned that women ski jumpers were excluded from participation in the Olympics, she championed and won the fight for women to jump in the Winter Games. I think today is our lucky day. We've got two athletes out here at the freestyle. So we've got one athlete stretching at the top of one ramp and one climbing up the stairs to another. Hopefully we'll get to see him do some tricks into this pool today. Alright, looks like we've got two young girls going up as well. Two probably young teenage boys at the top and two younger girls heading up. This concludes our tour of the Utah Olympic Park Museum. It's very educational and interesting to see all the different sports and activities and the ways that these Olympians get to the level they're at. So if you guys are ever in Park City, we recommend coming here. Like I said, general admission is free. You can pay for different tours, but you get plenty with the general admission. So check it out.
Brigham City, about an hour outside of Clark City, has a city dump that's free for everybody to use. A little RV dump here on the side of the road. Pretty easy to find and access. Again, we found this using iOverlander app. So we're just making a quick stop here to dump out our tanks. There's a free water spigot up the road at one of the rest stops that we're gonna use to fill our water tanks, and then we're gonna keep heading west for the day. There's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to want to make it move. Always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes I'm going to have to lose. It ain't about how fast I get there, and it ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb, it's the struggles I'm facing, the chances I'm taking. Sometimes they might knock me down, but no, I'm not breaking. I may not know it, but these are the moments that I'm gonna remember the most. Just gotta keep going. And I gotta be strong and just keep pushing on. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like, subscribe, and ring the little bell, and join us next Tuesday for another adventure. Thank <laughs> you.